So for the Celtic knot work, um, it is a simple four step, I, bo I boiled it down to four steps, um, that if you follow the steps um, as we go through it, you can end up with something that will look like this in the end, just kind of to give you an idea of what it is that we're going toward for right now. And this will take me probably about 20 minutes to go through. This is what we're doing right now. So we'll get it to this point, and then I'm gonna have you do another one down below it, and we're gonna add something to it. So this is where we start. This is where we can end up kind of to give you an idea of the, the progression on it. It's very repetitive. Let me tell you that right now too. So you do the same thing over and over and over again. So it really doesn't take much thinking while you're doing it. On the grid paper, um, four squares to the inch, I think works best for most people. Um, on the grid paper where the blue lines cross, I'm gonna put a dot just enough that I can see it does not need to be a circle, does not need to be heavy, it just needs to be enough that you can see where it is on your paper. Now, as we go through this, please ask questions. Now that we've got our first dot on the paper where the blue lines cross, we're gonna go across, we're gonna skip a blue line. So I'm gonna go to the following blue line and put a dot. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna follow a pattern. Remember our word on Saturday? So we're gonna, um, skip a blue line for each dot that we go across and we're going to start off with only five so i'm going to do five dots going across and on each one of them i have skipped a blue line okay we're good on that i can't look down and see what you're doing <laughs> now now that we've got this one going across we're going to come down we're going to follow the same pattern of coming down i'm going to skip a blue line and then i'm going to put a dot after I have skipped the blue line. We're gonna fill in a grid. So when I fill in that grid, I'm just gonna make sure that each of my dots line up with each other. And I'm gonna stop over here where this fifth one is. A good size to get started to learn on is gonna be four dots down. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna give us a rectangle shape rather than a square. So I'm just Kind of at this point, quickly putting those dots is going to indicate my position on it. When I see all heads come up, I will take it that you're finished with your dots. Okay, I see all faces. Now, to the side over here, um, we're going to write down what the steps are that we're actually taking. So step one is primary dots. And then this will be a reference. Uh, when I would teach this to kids, sometimes they would have a tendency to forget one of the steps and they'd look at their piece and they'd go, wait a minute, something went wrong. So we'd always go back and look at these right here and they would figure out, oh, I left out that step. That's what I forgot. Okay, now that we've got this, um, where we have got four dots that make a square, where we've got these four corners of the square, I'm gonna put a dot right in the middle. And when I put the dot right in the middle of each of these, as I'm going across, notice that I followed the same pattern of I skipped a blue line, put a dot, skip a blue line, put a dot. On the last one, I am inside where my primary dots are. In other words, I do not want to put a dot out here. So if you went further than where your primary dots are, you need to erase it. So on step two, step two are gonna be what we're gonna call our secondary dots. The secondary dots are always gonna be on the inside. Oh, and let me go back up here to primary dots and afterwards in parentheses, I'm just gonna put shape because what this, the primary dots do is they determine the shape that you're making. So in other words, right now we're making a rectangle because of the way we did our primary dots. If we wanted them 
say an L shape, we would make primary dots coming down and we make some going across. So whatever shape you wanna make is what your primary dots are gonna be. Secondary dots are always gonna go inside. So I'm gonna finish mine up inside. And again, they're just tiny little, little tiny dots that are gonna mark my place on it. Now I'm gonna scoot this over so that we can see the whole thing there. And are you guys seeing my camera icon in the red circle and all that over on the right hand side? So that's coming from my iPad, isn't it? Okay, got it. And you probably also see that white grid on there. You see the white grid? Barely, in the barely yeah. Okay, because that kind of bothers me. But, okay. Now, the third step that we're going to take with this, so I'm just going to go and write it down, is we're going to put in some circles. Boy, I can tell that my hand is not warmed up today the way I'm writing. So what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to reposition so it's a little bit more comfortable for me. The circles need to be the right size. If they're too big, it won't work. If they're too small, it won't work. So the correct size for the circles, and I'm just going to do a couple here and explain what I'm doing with it. So as I put these circles on, what I want you to see is they hopefully are pretty well concentric around the dot and the space between them is going to be the same diameter as what the circle is. So you're going to have to have a good space between those circles when you do them. This is one thing that it is very repetitive. As you're doing them, I will say go slowly and carefully with it because this is what's going to kind of determine what your end piece will look like. Now, what I did over here, and this is habit, I just skipped the one on the corner. We're going to end up erasing the one on the corner anyway. So you don't really need to do the ones on the corners. So as you're doing this, make sure that you've got that good amount of space between your circles that they're not getting anywhere close to touching because that will kind of throw things off. I guess this is kind of a, a technician sort of project, even though I don't consider myself a technician at all. I'm just going to go around each of those dots with that circle so that the dot is in the center, so it's going to be concentric. So it's going to look something like that when you get finished with it, but probably your circles are going to be a lot smoother than what mine are. Okay, so again, I can't walk around and see how you're doing, so just let me know when you get finished with your circles. Done. Done? Okay. Okay, Cynthia's finished. June finished. Mm -hmm. June's finished. Monica? Okay, you're muted, Monica. She's got the squeak toy. Yeah, <laughs> I have the squeaky toy. Um, yeah, I, I'm close enough that you can go on. Okay, now what I want you to do before we go on is when you do this is turn your paper so that now the dots are going, or the circles are going up and down. See how we now kind of made a grid that's sort of on a diagonal. So now my circles are going up and down. My circles form rows going across on it. It's gonna make it easier to explain the next step if you take one, this one corner dot and put it so that it's on the top of the page 
rather than the top left corner. It's just gonna make it a lot easier, okay? Now, what we're gonna do now, and I'll go back over here to my little notes. We've done the circle, so step four are gonna be our parallel lines. So this is when we really start doing the actual knot work. Um, all we've done so far is we just set up that underlying skeleton that we need in order to um, put the knot work on top of it. So the skeleton is going to kind of determine how well the whole thing works out on it. Okay, now what I'm going to do, if I start at that top dot in the corner, I'm going to come to the circle that is directly underneath it. So on this circle, the first circle down, at three o'clock, think of it as a clock face, I'm just gonna put a tiny little dot just to mark where three o'clock would be. So once I've got- Three o'clock from the diagonal, so it's not- Correct. So this would be 12 o'clock up at the top right here, so that's when we've turned our paper. It just makes it easier to explain to a group of people. So this would be like three o'clock on a clock face over here. I'm gonna go to the second circle down and I'm gonna do the same thing and mark it at three o'clock. Okay? Now, once I've got those two dots on those two circles, I'm gonna draw a line that connects them. The line that I drew is gonna be tangent to those circles. It's only gonna to touch the circle at one point. It's not gonna go through the circle at all. Okay, with me? Yep. Question? 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 Yeah, Susie, um, are you doing four and four? Cause I see five and four. Okay, question. yes, we're doing five across and okay. four. Hi, Sharon. I snuck in. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you did. Did you get caught up with us? Are you getting caught up? Okay, and Sharon, you're muted, so if you want to unmute yourself. Good. <laughs> okay, so you're good. Okay, so now that we've got our first line drawn, we made the note down here, it's going to be parallel lines. So I'm going to draw another one. Um, if I go to the second circle along that, what was the top edge, and I mark nine o'clock, put a little dot at nine o'clock, go to the second one, mark nine o'clock, and then connect those, I've now got my parallel line, my set of parallel lines. Okay? Now, from here, we're not gonna draw any more dots because you don't need any more dots. Those were kind of like the training wheels. So we're gonna take the training wheels off. What we need to remember is that parallel lines will always touch each other going at the opposite angle. So that's where we get the over and under from the Celtic knot work. So this set right here, I'm gonna say is going up and down. Underneath it is gonna go across. So this is where the set here is gonna go across. So what I'm going to do with you guys is I'm going to kind of skip a couple of steps that I normally do with my kids. Um, this, these two circles right here, I'm going to have a line that's going to go across that is going to, if the first two lines that you drew were not long enough, continue them down so that they touch that line now that is going across. So underneath it, above the two circles here, we're gonna put the line, oops, goes across, okay? So now it looks like this first set is actually going under that second set of parallel lines that we did. So now that we've got that pattern set up with it, we're now underneath this set, gonna do a set that goes up and down. As I draw, I'm going to make sure that my straight parallel lines touch each other because we don't want to leave gaps. Keep in mind that the circles and the dots were just the skeleton. So what we're now doing is we're actually building the knot work on top of what that skeleton was. So the set below it, I'm going to have a set going across. Now, if you'll notice on mine, by accident, see how those don't touch right there? I've got a gap. 
I'm just going to take my pencil. I'm going to connect it. I'm going to draw the second one that goes with it. And then underneath it, I'm going to have a set that goes up and down. If you did a five primary dot across by four down, you should have a set that goes up and down. Can I see what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Take a look. And I'm going to go back to seeing the screen view on this. Okay. Yep. Good, Angie. Good, Judy. June. Good. Monica, can you put yours a little bit closer, Monica? Good. Yes, I'm seeing the over and under. I think I'm too far apart. Let me see. Cynthia, I can't see yours. It looks like. I'm... Okay. Yep. I got it. Okay. And Sharon, uh, take a look at what Sharon did. Okay, Sharon caught it, caught us late coming in. What was the step that Sharon left out? Wait a second. I can't see her. can't see her. Are Sharon? You... Select her uh, photo and, and and go on top it and say pinned video. It won't let me do that. All it says is chat. Yeah, it just says chat. Can okay. I see her, her window? Um, yeah, go up in, in the very top instead of using speaker view. Go um, to gallery view and you'll be, be able to see hers. Well, is it looks too far apart to me. Okay, she left out the circles. Now, Sharon? No, they're there. They're just small. Tiny circles. Angie? Angie? That's it. Angie, I don't have an option for um, gallery view or speaker view anymore. Um, why don't you hit escape on your computer so that it doesn't take up the full screen? I'm on my iPad. <laughs> oh, that's why, Monica. There's, it's oh, okay. Well, Sharon, that's you're fine. Fine. The circles need to be a little bit bigger. Okay. So what that means is that those parallel lines would be a little bit closer together. Uh, the distance, and now that we've got some of these drawn, we can see that the width of the spacing between lines is about the same as the diameter of the circle. There's a couple of books that I've read that in. Is that uh, your graph paper is four, eight, eight squares and mine's 10. So that oh. has a difference too. I better go find some more graph paper. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll get you caught up. <laughs> so now that we've kind of done this part right here, let's now go to the left of the first set of parallel lines that we did. So if this set goes up and down, what touches it is gonna go across. So when I draw this set going across, whoops, okay, let's see. That one right there was a little bit off. I'm just going to make sure that my lines are tangent to the circles, that the lines touch the lines. So from here, now we are building up a repetition of those patterns. So what goes underneath the one that, the first one that went across, one underneath it is going to go up and down. So you've now got something that's starting to look like something woven. Now, one of the things that I did not say a few minutes ago was in order to put parallel lines in, you have to have the four dots to put the parallel lines in. So if everybody will take a look right here, at this space right here, I've got three of them, but I do not have a fourth one right there. I cannot put the parallel lines in. So if you happen to have, say, drawn a line going across, you're going to need to erase it. Okay, so that space has got to be left open for when we finish out what we're doing with it. So from here, I think I'm going to turn us loose to go back and fill in each place where you have got the four dots. I've got four dots right there, or four circles that make a square, basically. I can put in my parallel lines, and I'm going to make sure that they always touch going the opposite way, okay? If you've got sets of parallel lines that go the same way, it's not an over and under pattern. Uh, when I go over to the opposite side, I've gotta leave this space out. I'm not gonna do anything right here. 
Oops, is that exposure bed? Okay. So that means that I'm now going to put my parallel lines in that space because I've got those four dots that make a square. Does that make sense from afar? Yes. Okay. And again, I'm used to being in the room with the people doing this. <laughs> so it should look like a super close up of a piece of fabric that you're seeing those over and under sections on it. Second one down. Okay, how are we doing with it? Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody's look way different from this? No, the te the technician in me wants to go take a ruler and straighten up some of my lines. <laughs> Well, and that will come when we do the ink. Oh, okay. So this, I always go over these in ink, and you can do that when you do the ink. Okay. No, this is a very technician thing, isn't it? And I am so not technician. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do we have it filled out? Jean's looking at the screen. Is Jean finished? Yeah. Okay, and Monica must be finished. Angie? Got yours? <laughs> okay. Are you doing tracing paper, Angie? Is it working out? Okay. Okay. And what about Judy and Cynthia? I think mine looks like yours. Okay. And Cynthia, you good? Yep, I think so. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to reposition it so it's like this. So I'm going to go back to the original so that the top of the paper is horizontal. The next step is going to be joining the sides on it. So when I join the sides, what I'm going to do up at the top is I'm going to go to the third dot across. So the third dot across on the top, it has a line touching it. So the line that is touching it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that line and I'm going to gently curve it to where the blue lines cross each other. So see that curve on it? So I just kind of curved it up to where the blue lines cross. I'm now going to take and I'm going to curve it down so that it's going to come in before the circle that's to its left. And then I'm going to join it with the first parallel line so that it looks like it is going under and coming out on the other side. And you know, that's one thing that I didn't say in the beginning setup of this. When you're drawing these parallel lines, it should look like it's going under that bridge and then coming out on the other side. And that's one of those things that as you get to it, you'll start noticing that. Um, I see this one right here isn't real precise. So Monica, you're gonna love this part of it. So that you keep them so that it looks like there's that continuity of the over and under, okay? So one side, I'm now gonna go to the left. I've got another one that is touching that circle. I'm going to curve it up so that it touches the blue grid, curve it down so that it touches the circle, and then it's going to touch that line. So that's now connecting those outside pieces together. Sharon, I'll get you caught up. I'm fine. You're, okay. <laughs> now, next thing I'm going to do. So if you look at the screen while I'm doing this, so you don't get kind of confused, I'm going to take the paper and I'm going to rotate it. This is by far easiest if you rotate it. So now that I've rotated my paper, this right here should look just exactly like what we did. So this is the line right here that's going to curve to the outside blue lines. It's going to curve back down and come to the inside. When you're learning this to begin with, if you rotate your paper, it's a whole lot easier. 
Okay, I'm going to rotate my paper again. It's now upside down. So with it being upside down, this now looks exactly like what the top did. You can do these in any order you want to. And once you kind of learn how to do them, they go a whole lot quicker. Once you get used to it, I'm going to come to this one over on the left side. I know that it is a line that I want to continue. If I start down here, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to take the line, continue it to where the grid crosses, and then I'm going to curve it back in. So now that's something that's starting to come together. Okay. Are we caught up? No, not quite. Okay. Looks like a maze puzzle. Yes, it is. I love those. <laughs> I like this method. It's, it is so um, step by step on this one that you, you draw your dots then you get your secondary dots and then you put the circles in and then you do the parallel lines on top of it and once you get used to it you may think that the dots and the circles take too much time and you want to skip that to me that that is an essential part of it okay are we ready okay Cynthia's nodding I'm, I'm okay. Monica is, was looking back and forth. Are you ready? Okay. Are we ready? Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish the inside of where these, I'm, I'll call them highways. These highways are, we did the outside edge. I'm now, now going to take the line that touches the circle on the inside of the highway. And this one is just going to go around the circle and then when it gets to this point, it's going to come straight so that it touches that first line. A tiny little thing, but it makes a huge difference. So on the other one over here, the one next to it, I'm going to take the straight line that touches it. It's going to go around the circle and it's going to go straight so that it looks like it goes up under that bridge and then comes out on the other side. So if you compare what I've got across the top to what I've got across the bottom, the bottom just looks kind of unfinished. So on these, um, probably you can do this without turning your paper. If you want to turn your paper, you could. When you're drawing those lines, um, take a look and make sure that it looks like it's meeting on the opposite sides there. So that's one of those things kind of just get used to. So is it looking like Celtic not work now? Okay. Are we ready for corners? Okay, so June looks like she's ready. I'm ready. Ready? Okay, so on the corners, um, in most of the books that I've read having to do with Celtic knot work, it says the corners should come to points. So that's the way that I've always taught this, and that's why we did not put a circle on the corners. Because if I take that first set of lines that I drew, this right here, if I were to fill this out like what I was doing next to it, it's going to come up to where that blue line crosses. So it's going to curve up gently to where the blue line is. And then it's going to follow straight on the blue line until it hits that dot on the corner. Now, once you get used to this drawing it, you can do these kind of in one piece, but this gets you set up in the beginning from the corner over here. I'm going to follow the blue line down to where the grid crosses. So once I've got to that point, I'm gonna curve it in gently so that it's gonna to touch the circle. So it's gonna to be tangent to the circle. And then 
it's going to curve down so that it looks like it's going under that bridge and coming out on the other side. Now, to, I'm just going to go ahead and do the inside of the corner with you while we're on this one. On the inside of the corner, I'm going to take that line. It's going to go, once I go around the circle, it's going to come out straight, a tiny way to make a right angle up at that corner. It's going to mimic what's on the outside. So the outside edge corner is a right angle. The inside of it's a right angle too. It's going to curve around and then just come in. And let me show you on this sample that I've got right here. See how the corners come out to a point and the inside of them also are pointed rather than rounded. And this was something else that I've just gotten out of several of the Celtic Knotwork books. And off the top of my head, I cannot remember the guy's name that wrote so many of them. I, I just, I can't think of it right now. Aiden um, Meehan? Who? Aiden Meehan? Yes, that's, yes, that's one of them. He did the whole series, didn't he? Yeah. Okay, now I think it's easiest on these corners if you just turn your paper. And then I'm going to do the very same thing for the next corner. Except this time, rather than doing it piece by piece, I'm just going to draw that gentle curve and then go to a straight line. Coming down, it's going to be a straight line, gentle curve. And that's going to make the corner on it. If you want to do them with them straight in front of you, that's perfectly okay. How's technician Monica doing with this? Liking it? Love it. <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> I figured you would. So we've done just a simple five dots by four dots um, Celtic knot work in pencil. <laughs> And you've got your notes over here as to what the steps were that we took with it. The inner, the little circles though, do they get erased at some point after the inking begins or? Yes. They stay there? Okay. No, uh, we will eventually, and when we get to the inking part, and I wasn't, I mean, we can get to the inking part today if you want to, uh, but when we get to the inking part, we're going to draw the lines and most of these are going to end up as square-ish shapes. Since it's hand done, it's not going to be perfect, but they're going to be square-ish shapes, and whatever shape you have on the inside is what's going to get darkened in. Okay? Um, you know, Monica, I've never tried this with a straight edge, but probably you will, won't you? <laughs> what? Yes, I'll have to try it and see, but I'm yeah. not going to get married to it. <laughs> I mean, there's something organic about not using a straight edge. Yeah, that's true. It's more hand-drawn. Yeah. Uh, wow, I can't believe it. It looks like yours. <laughs> well, that's the idea. I love this <laughs> technique. It makes it more sensible to me. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a kind of a step-by-step -step that you go through to end up with the end result. But in the very beginning, when you're just doing your dots and you're doing your circles, you're probably thinking, what? This has nothing to do with Celtic knot work. So again, it's that skeleton you get set up in the very beginning. And my seventh and eighth graders, almost all of them, now I can't say all of them, but almost all of them loved it. <clears throat> and... What was really interesting to me was the kids who had kind of learning challenges with other subjects took to this in such a way I couldn't believe. 
And I think it's because it's so repetitive. They were doing the same thing over and over and they would take these full sheets of graph paper and fill up the whole sheet of graph paper with it. My and goodness. Kind of get addicted to it. <laughs> so now you guys do know the process of learning. You don't do it once, you do it again, right? <laughs> so what I want you to do, um, are we ready to do another one? Yes. I just have a question. Do, do you have a fifth step then, like co the corners, or is there any other step? Are there any other steps that we should remember? Oh, down here on five. Um, after parallel lines, it all is one of those things that I don't think you need to write down. But I have had lots of kids in the past. They forget to do secondary dots, and when they try and put it together, it doesn't work. And then I've had lots of kids forget to do circles. And when they do, they end up drawing the lines to the dots. And you don't get that separation of the strands. And it doesn't look as much like the over and under. It's what the purpose for the circles are. So if you want to take extra notes with it, you could. But that's pretty much the, the ones that I've been through. Now, what I want to do, if you're up to it, um, and this was one that I just happened to pull out the computer. I can show you pretty quickly how these things happen with it. See these designs where it, it breaks and it kind of goes back the other way. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple process. Well, okay. It's as simple as this was. So for some people, this is not so simple, but for some people it is. Um, but if you want me to show you how to put the extra designs in it like that, mm -hmm. that so, um, do you want to go through another five by four underneath this, and then we'll just build on it? It won't take very long. You'll be surprised how quickly you'll go through it. Okay, so let's do another one. I'm gonna call it a five by four. So that means it's gonna be five primary dots across and four down. These aren't too big to work with. Um, go to the circles and then stop. Okay, do not go past the circles. Do not put in any parallel lines because we're gonna do this next thing before we do the parallel lines. And then two, this will help when you go back through it again, it'll help you see, um, you know, I didn't quite understand what we did with this. So this will be kind of like a little review. This is kind of like in school we call homework, okay? <laughs>
So in my classroom, I would say, put your pencil on the table when you're finished so that I would know people were finished. How can I do this in our case? <laughs> I'm done. Done. Okay. Done. We can okay. raise our so blue we're ready. and we're done. Okay. Now, um, if we want to build some of the designs in, like, I'll hold this back. Like some of these are right here that forces the design to change a direction. We're going to put in what I've always called in the past, just a wall or a barrier. And it is going to be a line that we're going to draw that must go vertical or horizontal. It can go between any two dots that you want them to go through, but they must go up and down or across. In other words, they cannot be at an angle. If you put them at an angle, they won't work. So when we do this, um, a lot of times symmetrically, we'll make some fairly nice designs. So I'm just going to kind of make these up as I go right now. Let's go on the top um, edge of it where the third dot across is. And from the third dot across going straight down, let's draw a line that connects those dots. Now, this is going to be, and if this is drawn a little bit darker, it's okay, because this is something that later is going to get covered up with the black ink anyway. So now that we've got one going up and down, um, let's, uh, let's just go down below and do this symmetrical going down below. So I've now got two, I'm going to call walls that are in there. Um, this, is, this one is a little bit smaller, but... Um, over on the left-hand side, we don't have a dot that occurs exactly in the middle, but we do have a secondary dot that's here in the middle. So I'm just gonna put a little arrow right there that is between these two primary dots. So we can go across here and put a wall right there that's going across, and this one right here. Let's just do these, let's just do these four to kind of get used to it. And then from there, you can kind of take it to the direction that you want to and put in the number. But this at least, it'll give us enough places to put our parallel lines in and then build the areas um, that are going to be around where those barriers are. Okay, so after this, we put in our parallel lines. Um, when you put in parallel lines, you can start anywhere you want to, but you must build out from where you start. In other words, if you've got a great big piece going, if I start a set of parallel lines right here, and then I want to come down here and say, put in a set of parallel lines here and hope they come together to meet, you got a 50-50 chance they won't. So uh, wherever you start is where you want to continue out with those lines to touch each other. So if I do what we did, the very first one, and then the set that goes underneath that, I'm going to let them go at the opposite angle. We're going to put parallel lines in wherever we have got four dots that make a square or a diamond shape that do not have that wall in there. So that means right here, I've got the four dots. I can put my parallel lines in right here. I cannot put them in in this space. We'll save that for later. I cannot put them in right here. Can we put them in here? Will that work? Right in the middle? No. Yeah. There's a wall uh, there. Yeah. No, you can you can put them in um, on the diagonal. Yes. So I'm going to put my parallel lines right here. Yes. Yes, that. Because that is an open area. And then as I come on down, I'm going to try and fill up what I can so that they're actually touching each other. And I, to be honest, I'm not sure if on this one we're going to have to get into the what if kind of thing. Let me see if it will. Okay, so once I've done that, this set right here in the middle is going diagonally like that. And see, that's why earlier I had you turn your papers because it's a whole lot easier to say up and down and across and you understand rather than this way and that way. <laughs> so um, now that I've got this way going, I can now go up into the top right corner with the parallel lines. And 
And as I'm doing this, would it help if I talk through these? Or are you guys okay with it? Again, I can't see what you're doing on your papers. I'm trying to copy you. Okay. Well, to kind of talk my way through it then. So from that center section, and you know, to do this, I think I'm gonna turn that, I'm just gonna turn it, it's going up and down. Uh, I mean, is it at a diagonal now? And you know, when I did that, oh my goodness, these are not real precise, are they? I'm gonna have to work on those a little bit. I can see now. So if the set in the very middle is going up and down, what touches it to the left is going to go across. I can do one more to the left. It is going to go up and down. And then above it, I'll have one that goes across. Now remember that if you do not have the four dots that make a square, you cannot put in any sort of line. Here I cannot put in any, cannot put in any. Uh, Let me see, I've got one more right there. And if you happen to forget a set of parallel lines, it's, it's very much okay because you can do that as you go with it. Okay. Are we pretty much to that point? Wait a second. Okay. Um, Okay, so do we have something that looks like this? Yes. Yeah, kind of, sort of. Okay, so um, let's start with what we know. So we're going to build with what we know. This right here is going to be a corner in it. So let's just do this as the corner that we learned how to do a minute ago. I'm going to go ahead and do the inside and the outside of it as I go. So I've now got, looks like two pieces kind of coming together. Got it. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hand and cover up the right side of this. And when I cover up the right side of it, now that plus sign is gone on mine. You yeah, see? because uh, yeah. you went off of the time lapse. I guess that was with the time lapse. Okay, okay. So now that I've got this covered up, does this look like it's going to be another corner? So I'm going to erase Call from the circle. Sorry. Oh. You want to erase the uh, wall? Yeah, I'm trying to get the phone off. Oh. Oh. All these distractions that can help happen when you're live, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're just <Okay. laughs> so when I cover up the other half, I'm gonna raise a circle right there because it turns out that I really don't need it. Because this is going to be a corner that's gonna be on the inside of my piece. So when I build the corner, and if I did it like I did before, I'm gonna start with the line. So I'm gonna start down on this line. It's gonna curve out till I hit the grid. It's gonna come up straight from the point. I'm gonna come across and then this is where it will start curving to come back in. Once I've got the outside drawn, I'm gonna do the inside. So I've now got two corners there that are right next to each other because of that wall that we put that went up, up and down, okay? Now, I'm gonna take this piece of paper and when I cover up the bottom half of it, so I'm covering up the bottom half, I've got my two dots that were there, this is my wall, this is really gonna be like an outside edge. So think of this as now being an outside edge. It's gonna curve, it's gonna come down till the blue lines cross, and then it's gonna curve back up. So that's gonna connect these pieces together. Oh, well, we're gonna end up with some pretzels on this, aren't we? <laughs> um, and then on the inside, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna curve it to join on the inside. 
When the pieces start coming together is when it starts making sense, but I agree that when it looks like this, it's just a big random, it, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. But when you start putting the pieces together, that's when you kind of see what's happening. Now from here, I think the next thing I would do is this outside edge right here. So it's not that you have to do these in any particular order, you're just connecting them as you see that they can be connected. So this is the outside edge. We'll do the inside right there, which then makes this pretzel go down into something in my lower left corner. And if I work with the lower left corner, what's on the opposite side of this wall is gonna be basically a mirror of it. Um, when I would teach this with my kids, I would ask them, okay, so how many people in here have played pool? We talked about, you know, when you hit the pool ball and it hits the wall, it bounces back at the same angle. So when the line hits the wall, it's going to bounce back coming down. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing on the inside. So from here, you can kind of take the piece that you want to to finish it off as you go. So I think I would do the corner next. It's gonna curve back up. And then even though the first time I showed you, we did all the outside edges, then we did the inside edges. To me, it just works better to do the inside and outside at the same time to finish it up as I go. Which takes us down to the bottom what can we do with that circle right there? What I do with the circle on the top? You erased it. I erased it. So if we erase it, I have had kids before try to do this without erasing it, and they will always, with their pencils, kind of go around where that circle is. They won't go through it. <laughs> so it really works better to erase it. Or as you're doing your design, just keep in mind that not really everything has to have circles on it that you could do without some in some places. So this bottom center is gonna come back to a corner, which is gonna make another pretzel. Okay, I see heads down, which means that you're drawing and you're working on it. Does anybody have any questions? Do you want to finish out the other half by yourself? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> you may look like quick learners, but. <laughs> so, do you want me to do it without saying words? Yeah, no. that, that would work. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see if I can do this without talking at the same time. Oh, your squares are good. Yeah, they're going to touch. Yes, they will touch. That's a good question. I haven't said that yet. Now, some people will like this, some people will hate it. How do we feel in general? I'm liking it. We're okay with it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> some people, as Cora was saying on Saturday, will never want to do it again. She was talking about something. Take it or leave it. Yeah, they can leave it. This is one of those things that you, when you learn how to do it and you've practiced it some, it never leaves you because it's probably been a year 
since I've done any of this. It's going to haunt us. <laughs> it's going to haunt you forever. <laughs> now, I'll be back shortly. Wow, I did it. I didn't think it was possible. Well, I would think it'd be easier for the Zentangle people. Well, and I would do it a totally different way, but I had done some things with this CPT online and I, I did this, um, let me pause this. Let's see. What did you grab? A pen. A pen. Oh, a pen, like you're going to write. A pen. And the pen that I grabbed, if you've got anything that's like a 0.5 black pen, See. Okay, we're back. Um, the ones I really like best are the Sharpie pens, not Sharpie markers, but a Sharpie pen, this medium point. I couldn't find one, but I found one that's uh, one of these, right, or a Micron 05 or something like that would work. So somebody was asking earlier about, oh, the circles. That was, um, who was that? That was Monica or Sharon, I think it was was asking about the circles on it. So when you go over this with your ink pen, what we're interested in now is only the lines. You're gonna to totally ignore the circles. You don't need the dots. We only want the lines that we did. So this is where I can go back and now clean up when I go over it with my pen. So I'm only gonna go over the lines. I'm gonna go over the pieces of it. And this is where I usually turn my paper a lot. just to get the steadiness of the line. Then once I've gone over the lines, we're gonna have these little shapes result from the way we've drawn them. Some of them are gonna be squares. Now, in this design, I don't think we've got any squares, do we? I think they're all other sorts of shapes. But the shapes that do result will then get darkened in. And when I darken them in, I'd always teach my kiddos to go around the outside edge first, to get a little bit thicker. And then once I've got it thicker around the outside edge, just do all my marks in the same way. Fill it in nice and solid. When you copy it, if you've got white spots that emerge from these dark areas, they just show up like glitter on the page. And again, this is kind of fast. And then once you go over it, your ink has had a chance to dry, you can then erase any pencil marks that you still see. Most of it, you're going to go over it with the ink pen, you know. Um, there will be cases like what I did right here was the first line that I drew did not go quite far enough. If you have to choose between them, I'd say make it too short than too long because if you make the line too long, it's going to go into that highway that it touches and you won't be able to get rid of it unless you use white out or some other way to camouflage it. And again, this is a very repetitive kind of a process. Some people will like it. Some people will read it. So that took longer than what I planned to do, but that's, that's how I've gone through some Celtic work in the past and teaching it. So from there, you kind of 
and do what you want with it. I know one time I did a, a program for our guild and the program that I did with the guild, uh, it was probably about this in depth. And what people ended up with later was it's kind of like, oh my goodness, I can't believe, wow, that's amazing. So from here is, you know, if, if you want to go take it further, you can. If you don't ever want to do it again, <laughs> you have that prerogative to not do it again. Whereas if you were in my art class, you had to do it. <laughs> so that bigger one you showed us, Susie, had some wavy lines in it. Is that a... Right here? Oh. Yes. Okay. Or is, that, is that just really the same thing? It just looks more wavy. It's the same thing. And let me see if I can pick up maybe a red pen or something. So like right here, going across, that would be a wall going across right there. That's not going to show up. Oh, okay. Um, there's one up and down right here. In order to get any sort of a design out of it, you do have to have three primary dots white. So there would be one right here, a primary dot right here, and then a primary dot right here. Oh, okay. Two primary dots white, all it does is just loop around. Okay. What it does. So that is the, the barrier going up and down. That's one going across. This one's going up and down. And then I skipped a space down in here. And then, of course, we did some with, did we do a double corner? We did a double corner. So you can do the double corners on them. So this is where when you start putting in, and then you end up with some of these little design elements like this, where if they touch each other at the point, you can end up with four corners on the inside like that. One of the things that I did learn through trial and error is that you're, Walls cannot cross each other to make an X. It won't work. Like, um, for example, let's see if I can do something right quick with it. That. Um, if I had walls trying to do that, whoops, you can see that, can you? Um, that won't work. So okay. X next to that. But if over here, I say I've got one, I need a fairly big space to do this. I'm coming down there, one coming there. That would, and that would then give the points that come in the corners. Yeah, through the years of doing this, I had kids come up with all kinds of <laughs> what ifs. So I was kind of on the spot figuring out, okay, now is this going to work or not? <laughs> I bet. And I had a girl in class one time that came up with this fabulous design of four hearts, that this was the center of the bottom of the hearts, that this would be like a heart here and a heart up here that was just amazing. Can't see it. <laughs> okay, so um, it was like something like that, but she, she had done it a lot bigger. It, it looked like it was rounded. Oh, gotcha. Okay. As far as the heart shapes, and that was where the four of them came together. And well, and actually, it'd be like a clover, too, kind of like a clover leaf. So when you start playing with it, there's all kinds of different designs and patterns and letters. We did lots of letters of the alphabet. Um, when you get comfortable with it, you can, and, well, you cannot have edges that are diagonal. They've either got to go up and down or across, but you can mimic it if you stair-step it. So like if I were to do the outside edge of a design. See how I'm stair-stepping that right there? Okay. I look like it's at a diagonal, even though it's really not. Huh. Okay. So I did an, an S one time, and the S took up a full sheet of graph paper in order for it to 
<laughs> okay, so these would be, let, let me set this up first of all with primary dots. So this would be primary dots. That would be primary dots. So I've got my grid set up with the primary dots first, okay? Then you go back and you put your secondary dots in. And because it gets kind of complicated like this, I always take my pencil and just do a real light pencil edge. So I know that that is the outside of what my design is. So I've still got primary dots. I've still got secondary dots. Oh, and I don't think I said this either. Um, when you get all those dots on your paper, it really then makes no difference whether it's primary or secondary. That's totally irrelevant at that point. You've got all your dots you need to draw the pattern with it. So if you want to do something that's got a curve on it, like a letter C, so you could do a C that's got straight edges like that, or you could do a C that, let's say it's got a corner cut off of it. Kind of like pixelated. <laughs> like that, or if you want to get even more detail with it, you could go up and down and across. Of course, this isn't drawn to scale, but you can do those little stair step things like that, or even down here, cut off a line like that. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, that would take pretty much a full piece of paper to do that because each one of these is going to be a primary dot that's going to determine what that shape is. Okay. So, so and that's where you got those start. corners with black uh, fill. Say that again, Sharon. So between the di where the stair steps are, if you close that triangle and fill it with the dark, that that would smooth out the, the curve of the C on the Good. outside of the bar. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, and now the other thing that I didn't actually go through on this, um, and again, this is just kind of my way of doing it and, and reading through books and stuff like that, when we would get to the outside edge of it, we would just take a line that went across you know, fill these in as a half kind of a shape right there. So it had a straight line across the edge of it. And then if you're really energetic, do your little red dots that make the pattern around the outside. Have you seen those on the Celtic knots before? The series of the little red dots that are very effective. Now that pin right there is too small, but these ones are a little bit larger. So what I did, like on these bookmarks right here, I had one original that I did, and then I scanned it, I think is what it was. Um, and then when it was in my computer, I could make it whatever style I wanted it to, print it out on what kind of paper I wanted to, do a person's name in the middle, go back and do the red dots on the edge of it with a, a pen that just you know, made some dots to add some color to it. Why is that not wanting to focus? Stop it. What is it doing? Stop it. <laughs> so anyway, does anybody else have any other questions you want to ask? I think my iPad is getting ornery or tired or something the way it keeps focusing there. Okay, so can I stop screen sharing or does anybody else have a question you want to ask? Do you ever shade yours, Susie? Shake. Shade. Oh, um, I have not, but I have seen some pieces done that look wonderful like that. So you're talking about right here, a little bit of pencil marks. Right. A little yeah. bit of pencil marks. Oh yeah, that'd be fabulous. I have not, but that's a great idea. Love it. That would work. 
Yeah, I like the way that looks. Just a little bit of shading on it. 